what he wrote about Jewish people on Twitter this weekend was, I, I mean, it's stone cold, gross, beyond gross. Gross is too mild a word. It was, it was, it was almost unbelievably despicable. And at its heart was the idea that there um, is some sort of Jewish-led conspiracy or that Jews rule the world or that you're not allowed to... I just... I, 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 a lot of what he wrote, I can't repeat on the radio. And it seems to me to be really important to at least look at this story. I, 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 I take calls on it, 0345 60 but I don't know whether I'll need them because... I, I do want to get answers to those questions about employment law before we go. So if, if, if it means we have to return to this subject tomorrow, I shall do so with not pleasure necessarily, because I'd really rather this wasn't front and centre in the in the British media today. But I'm currently observing the 48-hour Twitter walkout over the platform's handling of anti-Semitism that began at 9am today. I think we've already had a wobble where we've retweeted one of the uh, clips that the LBC account has put out. But but my personal account will continue to um, try its very best. I will continue to try my very best to stay off Twitter for, for 48 hours. And I, I, I tell you what troubles me most. And the, the areas now, as you've probably noticed, I think we've all felt the world re shape itself slightly during lockdown but but for me the thing about lockdown that i think has changed the way i approach work is i now actively reach for the areas where i'm confused i think you know having been so right for so long about brexit even i got bored and so now i reach for the areas where i'm confused and and perhaps sympathetic to people whose position i don't fully understand so there's a lot of people on social media observing this walkout as i am and i thought it was a no-brainer there you go this is where the confusion comes in i thought this would just be yeah if you can if you if you have that autonomy then why not because twitter should have come down on this guy like a ton of bricks and they didn't and next time somebody posts undiluted anti-semitism then they will hopefully come down quicker if we send this message to them. I mean, the best way I could think of phrasing it would be to point out that there is, um, with great power comes great responsibility, and Twitter wields enormous power. But the, the reason I'm confused is because I don't have at the moment the answers to the point being made by some people, and I, I hesitate to say the names of these individuals, you know, one woman has been removed from Twitter after close to a decade of vileness. And some people are saying, why are we doing this now for Wiley? And I think the subtext of that is maybe Jewish lives matter more than black lives matter or more than Muslim lives matter. Because really, some of Donald Trump's tweets stand comparison with, with Wiley's. And, you know, he retweeted the woman who was very belatedly removed from Twitter. And I, I, I want to try to address that. Of course, I'm neither black nor Jewish. But I do care passionately about prejudice and, and bigotry, discrimination and racism of all kinds. And, and I, 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 hate, I hate to see this, even this rather noble and, and oddly beautiful campaign being polluted by confusion and and a sense of double standards and i don't know that i have the answers and i'd really like to 12:40 is the time so there is for me no debate about whether or not what wiley did was rank he's been banned for seven days and i think the offending tweets have been taken down but some of them remain on instagram and some of them remained on twitter for far too long now, Twitter's an odd business. If, if you don't have to deal with Nazis and, and, you know, absolute scumbags on social media, you won't know the half of it. But a lot of the policing of it is done by algorithm. So uh, complaining about tweets is usually a complete waste of time. But if, if you were minded to do so, the first measure of whether or not any rules had been broken is taken by a computer. It's, it's, it's done by algorithm. So there'll be some bureaucratic defense that Twitter might be able to raise uh, when it comes to the question of why they took so long to do what was so obviously right. But again, I don't think today's the day for that. I think that the, 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 the thing I'd most like to do is 
explain why this isn't double standards and explain... So let's talk about the woman who was taken off Twitter uh, for being absolutely despicable in every imaginable way. OK, I, I think she was cleverer than Wiley. You, you, when you've done this for a living for a long time, you get to spot the people who know exactly where the line is, exactly where the boundaries are. And although everybody who listens to them or, or, or reads them knows precisely where they stand on issues, they are cognizant of not just the law, but also the boundaries of acceptability. So, so what some of the people who've survived on Twitter for much longer and who have, and, and I think Wiley's going to be coming back to Twitter after his seven-day ban... So he, he described Jewish people as snakes, as cowards. He suggested that they were at war with black people. He said that there are two sets of people who nobody has really wanted to challenge, Jewish and Ku Klux Klan. So putting Jews, just Jews, everybody Jewish, in the same breath as the Ku Klux Klan, well, hardcore white supremacists, is just vile. I think not least because of the Ku Klux Klan's attitude to Jews over the years. But, but still, it seems to me to be unfortunate that people are reaching for the double standards card where this should be one issue where we can all march together. So I think the explanation is, if you are worried about such things, I think the explanation is that what the people being cited did... And look, you know, part of the reason why I'm so uncomfortable is because of the, the you know, the, the associations with some of the vilest people on the planet that we have. You, you know that you can put up a poster that has echoes of Nazi symbolism, but you know that you couldn't put up a swastika, right? You know that you can say absolutely disgusting things about Muslims in general terms, but if you deploy Nazi rhetoric or language you cross a line. And while it's always accompanied by a degree of schadenfreude to see people accidentally cross that line when they've spent their entire lives being really, really careful not to, I think that the case that we're discussing, the case of Wiley, is an example of somebody not knowing either how to camouflage his bigotry or even acknowledging that it is bigotry.